Hi, good evening everybody and welcome to the daily Rambam Shir, three chapters per day. It is being told that throughout the Yom Kippur War, when the war found the Israeli society totally unexpected to this war, and on the other hand they were in a state of tranquility, and suddenly in one of the shuls, in one of the shtiblach, the greatest general in Israel in those times, Moshe Dayan, comes in and he shouts, Guys, it's about time to stop to rely on miracles, start to say Tehillim. That was his uh, shout, that was his scream. Recently, we were always attempting to find, and thank God we are able to find a link between the topic of the daily Rambam to the weekly portion. And we read in the Torah that the greatest gift which was given to the Jewish people is as Chazal, our sages are expressing it in the following sentence. Hakoil koil Yaakov, the voice of prayers, the voice of Tachnunim, this is a special gift that God Almighty gave to the Jewish people and it comes into use especially in light of the topics that we have started yesterday, Hilchoistanios, times when the entire community goes into a gathering mode where the purpose of the gathering is to start with a communal prayer and blowing the shofar and the trumpets and so on. So the first chapter of our daily shiur defines precisely what is a sufficient reason for the community to enter to the state of za'ako, a communal prayer. He gives a list for about six different occurrences that will justify such a mode. First of all, he starts with anti-Semitism. It is interesting that I heard once what is a difference between a hatred that the Jewish people hate other Jews and the hatred that anti-Semitism will hate other Jews. And the answer that is given that typically will ask any Jew, do you love the Jewish people? I'm in love with them. So what do you say about your neighbor? Oh, this neighbor, you cannot trust him. You cannot believe a word he is saying. He is the most obnoxious human being. And what will you say about your business associate? It will be similar comments. And when you will say about anti-Semites, what you are saying about the Jewish people? He will say, they are terrible because they are controlling the banks and they are controlling the world and all the other type of conspiracy theories. And then you will raise to him the following question, how come that his doctor is Dr. Goldberg? And how come his accountant is Mr. Silverstein? His doctor is Dr. Cohen. And you will say, well, the doctor, the accountant, the lawyer, that's a totally different story, but it doesn't represent the Jewish people. So that's the difference, you know, we say that in the Jewish people there is Am Yisrael and Reb Yisrael. So while the anti-Semite will hate Am Yisrael, he may be okay with Reb Yisrael, with certain individuals, where by many Jews you will find the opposite. They are in love with the collective of Am Yisrael, but they will have problems with that individual, with another neighbor, with the business associate, and so on. So the first situation where anti-Semitism triggers a good reason for communal gathering in the mode of za'ako, blowing the shofar, fasting, and other rituals that are associated with Hilfo Istainis, is when the enemies of the Jews, what we call it to them anti-Semite, they are oppressing the Jews, whether they demanding from them a piece of land whether they demanding from them 
assets or whether they want to impose upon them excessive taxes on a permanent basis. All of those reasons are sufficient enough to gather the community for a prayer event, for blowing the trumpets, and also for announcing a communal fest. There is a second reason that is justifying a state of za'ako, screaming prayers, and so on, what we call that a religious emergency mode, and this is associated <coughs> with a pandemic. It's called the devil. However, the Rambam gives very precise guidelines that only with those situation parameters a halachic acceptable definition of pandemic will be accepted. And he gives over here, first of all, the percentage of people should be slightly about half a percent, even goes into resolutions of numbers. A city that consists of 300 people, so you are expecting that within um, three, within three days, three consecutive days, uh, an amount of five people should be passing away. And if a city I'm sorry as I said it's about half it's about slightly <coughs> about half a percent from a city of 500 people from a city of 500 people the expectation to define a situation and pronounce it as a pandemic three people in three consecutive days which means let's say Sunday died one person Monday another person and Tuesday another person only then where a very well established pattern of death can took place only then you can logically establish this occurrence as a pandemic at a city of a thousand people you expecting six people so that's the idea it's slightly above half a percent however it must be done in a very consecutive ways and then it is pronounced as an emergency mode which triggers all the rituals and customs that are associated with tinies. Then there is a third occurrence where a military action takes place. Even a camp of an army that not necessarily waging war with the local citizen but they are on the way to wage war with another army but they just passing by this is also a justifiable occurrence that can be defined as an emergency mode and call everybody to an event of Zaako and Philo fourth situation if the harvest is being attacked whether by grasshoppers or even a situation where the commerce of the locals is dependent upon a certain product and suddenly the prices of the product have been plummeting from 40% of their market price and below is a sufficient reason also to gather for prayers and fest because when the source of livelihood is being cut so though currently seemingly they are all alive but the future is already predicting a very very dark future then there is a Hayo Hayo is an attack of a what we called it a beasts, animals, who are very harmful. 
and you know there is a very famous story that once upon a time a person came to a city and he was looking for a rental and he goes to one prospective landlord and he starts to interview him and he says to him how many children you have he says he have about eight children he says I'm very sorry but you know we part of our policy is to have a limit for one two children the most because otherwise it doesn't economically it's not sound for us to go and rent the apartment and then he went to another apartment and he goes through the same story until he realized that the only way for him to manage to recite in the city is to lie to the landlord so next apartment he goes and he asks how many children you have he says, none and okay no problem you have an income he shows him the payment stub he hands him the key and uh, goes to his way then he decided to bring all his children very late at night to sneak them in they go into the apartment and they start to produce their sounds their fight their, you know children to behave like children and the landlord was not able to sleep a whole night because he was living up there and the, all the screams and the shouts and the breaking and so on in the morning he knocks on his door he says I'm very upset at you and I'm very disappointed at you you look like a very pious righteous person and you just lied to me he says I lied I didn't say one word of lie I said the truth he says really you told me you have no children and I see over here eight children in your house he says these are not children they are chayois they are animals so it's interesting over here when the Rambam defines one of the situations of the occurrences that a tainis and a zeako needs to be announced he is giving five different scenarios which means like any way of a interference must to have the right parameters that will justify proclamation of this situation as an emergency mode for example depends where the animal is appearing and depends also what time if an animal appears at night you cannot call it a unusual event because at night this is the time when they are around however if the animal appears in a city where residents are that can be a reason to uh, proclaim as a day of Zako or if it is outside the city and it is able to face two people and not to run away from them that's already another level that indicates that something unusual there is an alert system that we need to do something about it if the animal stays next to the lake where the lake this is her environment so it's not enough only that she is not running away but in order to determine this is unusual situation she actually needs to run after the people and if the animal is indeed inside the lake the only way to proclaim the situation as a disastrous if she actually encountered two people and attacked one of them and did not attack the other which all the combination of those details are making the final situation to be defined as a justifiable reason to proclaim as an emergency mode further than this there is a situation where people taking adventurous experiences and they moving into the far-fetched deserts or places where no one I would say very rural rural areas and in those areas the only way to 
define the situation as emergency is not only if you see an animal. If you see an animal, it's nothing in those areas because this is their natural place. Only if they are actually approaching a house, climbing until the roof, and able to pull out a infant out of its cradle, only then the situation can be pronounced as an emergency. So it's interesting that the Rambam gives within high or low, bad animal type of attack situation, five different levels which really resembles each and every situation and timing according to the para particular parameters of that uh, situation. At the end of this chapter, of the first chapter, he brings the final case where the majority of Maseches Tainis and the majority of Hilchois Tainis are being surrounded about. And this is when there is a lack of rain. Because after all, the nutrition of a human being depends in the harvest that he is able to collect. And if there is no rain, there is no harvest. And if at the 17th day of Cheshvan, according to the Rambam, it is clearly that he takes at that time, at the 17th day of Cheshvan, when no rain is appear after three weeks beyond the due date of Geshem, so then individuals who volunteering to fast they starting to fast on monday thursday and monday because those are the days when torah is being read and excessive prayers are being recited and considered to be a a time where the prayers are being better heard and better accepted by god almighty those after this particular three voluntarily tiny fest that each and every one of those Talmidei Chachomim of the scholars taking upon themselves they fest and nothing happens. So then based in imposing a mandatory fest upon the entire community. However, despite the fact that it is mandatory, Nevertheless, the fest starts only in the morning. It's not starting like you keep a Tisha B'O from the eve, from the evening, but it starts only in the morning. So until Aloisa Shachar, until done, a person can go and eat. However, there is many restrictions are taking place in the fact that also pregnant ladies or people who are feeding their babies gotta participate in the fasting uh, limitation in commerce and any type of work are being imposed as well in those mandatory taniyos and if those three taniyos have passed by and nothing happened so then the imposing additional three taniyos at that time, there is a higher level of restriction since also the members of the temple, what they call the Anshe Mishmo and Anshe Beis Av, they are also carrying liability to participate in the Tainis as well. And after those three mandatory, uh, after three, those three mandatory three and three mandatory fests that they imposed and nothing happened, then they introducing a seven additional mandatory fests, which makes it a local of 13 mandatory fests. What makes the last seven fests different than the first six, although the first six are mandatory and the seven as well are mandatory, the difference is there is a communal gathering in what we call it in the center 
in the plaza of the city and they searching for a very qualified individual who will give Divrei Kibushin words of inspiration, words of awakening and also there is a process, a communal soul search after their deeds, after their action in order to improve. One of the famous lines that the community inspiring individual shares with the community he gives them a reference to the people of Nineveh. He says, Raboisai, not the fast and not the torture, they are the causes of making God change his decision to improve the situation. But you got to take a cure from the people of Nineveh. It says the people of Nineveh, that God Almighty have switched the decision on them to save them from the tragedy that were about to happen to them because it says Vayar es God have noticed their action it doesn't say God took notice for their fasting for them not eating it says God took notice for them changing their action that's what made the difference so these are the words of the community men. Also there is quite a very large section in the Rambam to, that is being dedicated to the qualification of the Chazan, the person who will lead the prayers in the city center. It's so uh, interesting that even a Chazan requires not only he should have a good and loud voice but also clean without any blemish, no ethical blemish, no bad rumors upon him, uh, even in his youth and his childhood. And a person who is a hard worker and earns a little bit, and yet he is very sincere and people love him. So I guess he, as a personality, he must to be blessed with so many good traits and character that very rarely they come together in one personality but that's I guess what is required from a chazan in, um, in those days. In the third um, chapter the Rambam goes in to the actual prayers that are being added into the Shemona we know that all those additions that we ask in God Almighty for help, for rescue, out of those terrible situations that we found ourselves in, they are, some of them, happen to be quite familiar to us from the text of Slichois, before Shoshone and throughout Tiny Sibu in about a week and a half, we're going to mark the 17th day of Tammuz. So, in some of these psukim that the Rambam mentions, essentially it is almost like a copy and paste of those psukim that are part from our prayers. So, it is about six blessings that are referring to God Almighty he should rescue us and save us from this crisis we are in, same way as he have saved Yehoshua when he is struggling with the enemies throughout the occupation of the land of Israel. He should save us like Shmuel Hanovi when he was leading the Jewish people in the mitzvah. He should able to save us like Elijah the prophet Elio Anovi when he was in the Mount Carmel and Yoino Hanovi who was in the insights of the big fish and those crises that we are bringing and introducing 
in our prayer is reminding and our verbalizing those words is in order to trigger the mercy in God Almighty towards us that all those situations though at, when they occurred was not necessarily 100% chance that the Jews really deserve to be rescued because obviously each and every generation have faced their own challenges and not always they were able to withstand those challenges successfully and as a result of them not be able to withstand those challenges successfully Midas Hadin, the attribute of severity and judgment came about to life and they were faced and they were major turning point and despite the fact that it was Midas Hadin out there nevertheless God Almighty have saved us so for that reason we are mentioning those historical turning points that despite the fact that it was questionable whether we deserve to be saved or not to be saved God Almighty took the rescue approach and today we are celebrating our existence as a result of the approach of God Almighty in those days. I would like to conclude in the, since right now we have just started in our daily shiurim, the Igele Satshuvo. And the Alter Rebbe said a very powerful uh, point that when God Almighty, with what we call the Kalvochoimer, Kalvochoimer is one approach or one method in logical method of in English it's called how much more so and in what sense the halachic expectation of an individual is always to forgive if the other party expressed sincere regret of any harm that caused to another one so there is an obligation for the person to forgive and he should not be cruel by not forgiving so if this is the halachic expectation of a human being god almighty that the attribute of his rachamim mercy is basically limitless how much more so he will always forgive and he proves it. He gives also a very interesting proof halachically. Every day throughout our prayers, we conclude the prayer or the blessing where we ask in God Almighty to forgive to our sins. And we say, Baruch Ato Hashem, Chanu Namar Belisloyach. We are reciting the name of God, Beshem Malchus, with the name of God and with the royalty title that is accompanying the conclusion of the blessing if we would not be certain that God 100% will forgive us then it will be a suffix, a doubt of Brocho Levatolo, express the name of God in vain and since it is forbidden to express the name of God in vain so obviously it is a hundred percent certainly that God is forgiving and further than this right after we say we are reciting that God Almighty will redeem us and yet the question how come we are not redeemed and we still reciting so the Alter Rebbe is introducing a very phenomenal concept that as far as the effectiveness of the blessing for him redeeming us from a perspective of the blessing 100% the redemption is taking place side issue external factors coming in kicking into the picture as he expresses it if we would not have been repeating our mistakes and sin again then the redemption would long time go away and for that reason 
you can see in light that those blessings that are being attached to the blessing of Goyali soil indeed is in order to invoke the infinite, endless attribute of Rachmim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to go redeem us from Golus entirely and in the meantime to rescue from all, all other non-pleasant occurrences that are taking place. Thank you very much.